<laughs> but it's one way or another. So, uh, just talk, speak up because of the. Yeah. The okay. Data. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then. Um, Let me know when you want me to press the Facebook live. So if you go Facebook live now, I've got it ready to um, start recording. And once he shares to the group, what happens is there's a 30 second. Uh, Sponsor ad that runs, and we I can okay, hear it. Can, we'll just wait. Share the group it's, it's ready. We're Facebook okay. Live. Oh, welcome everybody to Facebook Live. Uh, we are on Facebook Live today. Uh, we are at the Limestone Branch Distillery here with Stephen Bean. It's going to be pretty exciting. <laughs> and then also Super Nash, along with Roxy, who is our videographer. If it uh, gets to the point she'll just pick up the camera and start getting close to us but hopefully everybody can hear us we are actually in the distillery while it's working <laughs> so there's a little bit of background noise but not as much as there was before that's for sure it's a little bit more quiet so uh once uh super nash shares to all the groups which he's getting that really down now he knows what he's doing after, <laughs> after a couple of days we're hitting right down now so i shared it to the scotchy bourbon boys and it turned the camera the other way around it, go to the scotchy bourbon boys martin and see if it's, if it's, if it, it's it was right straight up okay but then i shared it to the scotchy bourbon boys and then it flipped, flipped the camera it. Uh -huh. i shared it to the scotchy bourbon boys well right. we might we we might, uh, you should, once you're done, you should it. check to see if the flip around uh, is if we're sideways. That's <laughs> happened before, and everybody's yeah. like, we're sideways. Because yeah. now it's looking sideways. It's Technology, right? You should yeah. stop, because if I stop it, you're going to have to reshare it to all the groups again. Yeah, okay. but, oh, so okay. okay. Stop yeah, it. Check, check, check the video feed right now, what it's, it's doing. it's not going to we... stop. Oh, no, it's still going. It is, it's right. It's right? It's right. Even yeah. though it doesn't look right here? As of right now, when he's looking, it's right. It so right. we're good on, on Facebook. If anybody sees it sideways, uh, let us know on a comment. Say, okay. it's sideways. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyways, so it looks like we're shared. Did you get pretty much of them? Or do you want to do a couple more? We got a couple more. All right. It's just a little bit, and then we'll get yeah. started, folks. Right. The problem we'll get... is I can't see what I'm looking at. But you just have You don't have to see it. Well, yeah. You just... I do. You're not dyslexic, though, so you should be fine. <laughs> right now, all I see is the, the windows. You shared it to the Scotchy Bourbon Boys. It's like, I just don't under, understand why Martin oh, he skips up. Yeah, okay, so we're good. So we're ready to go. Right. So we will start the podcast right now. There'll be a 30 second, uh, I'll, when, when this goes to YouTube, the ad will be in there. But for you Facebook people, we're going to be quiet for 30 seconds. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Spirits of French Lick is proud to introduce the Maddie Gladden Bottled and Bond Bourbon. This four-year-aged bourbon is double pot distilled and non-chill filtered and has a full-bodied mouthfeel with eucalyptus, molasses, clove, ginger, and slight citrus as well as grains of paradise. The finish is long and reappearing on the back of the tongue with notes of pepper, tobacco leaf, and mint cream. All of our spirits are available for tasting and purchase inside the French Lick Winery and Distillery. Spirits of French Lick, respect the grain, please enjoy responsibly, and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, we did it! <laughs> it worked! <laughs> Technical difficulties in the past. All right. Yeah. We're at a really good whiskey bar this morning. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, great, great stuff yesterday. Yeah, we do. Yeah. It's a good thing we're not that, right? <laughs> uh, it's like, uh, welcome everybody back to the Scotchy Bourbon Boys. Uh, we are the Scotchy Bourbon Boys, and we are here at the Limestone Branch Distillery with Stephen Bean. 
everybody yeah. who is a Scotchy bourbon boy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's fun to run yeah. around. Uh, welcome, Steven. Oh, it's great to be here. Well, great, I said, welcome you guys to be here. It, hey, thank you. It's great to be here with you. Yeah. And I apologize for the setting, but we literally have no place in this distillery that something isn't going on 24 hours. Hey, that's a good thing. <laughs> and, and now we're part of that. Yeah. It's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And this is Super Nat. Hey. And we also have Roxy behind the camera. Uh, she might show her face a couple times. Who knows? And we got Tiny right here behind <laughs> the main mic. It's so, it's so great to be here today because uh, uh, this is one of the first distilleries. Uh, when we started touring distilleries in 2019, we took a tour we had been up in Louisville, and we came back, and we took the last afternoon tour, right. and it was uh, we. It was the start of understanding how uh, family orientated this industry is, and how yeah. the distilleries on the tours, uh, when you meet the people behind it all, how how they're those people, the, the tour people, and then also the people making the whiskey, and how much of a big of a, a family they are, right. and then it was just. Uh, kind of evolved and then when we had the Scotchy Bourbon Boys it was great because you all of a sudden I, that I couldn't believe the day that you accepted the, the request <laughs> into yeah. the Scotchy Bourbon Boys I'm like oh my god <laughs> we got Stephen B yeah, yeah. 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 he did that early yeah. on so we were we were pretty excited about we having sure you this guy and then your friendliness throughout and your you know just yeah. talking back to you on uh, forth and your uh, accessibility that you had, you know, on Facebook, and then, you know, just how it's evolved and where where you are today, and where you were a couple of years ago, but now <laughs> where you are today and what's happening with everything. So, yeah, it's been real exciting yeah. watching you grow and evolve. Yeah, when you, when you think, and this was before your first time here, but when you think, when people come here, they'll see three barrels out on. Uh, you know, to welcome you in with our logos on it. Mm -hmm. Those three barrels are what we started fermenting. <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. that, that's amazing. So in, in 2011, we were fermenting in uh, four, and then I think six or eight, uh, 60 gallon barrels. So, cool. and, uh, and then, so from that, we moved on to this. So, you know, for, for us, growth has been important, but I, I still want to maintain you know, a very small uh, footprint. I, I, I don't really care to do hundreds of barrels a day. You know, the, we're, we're, we'll be up to 10 now, and that's uh, plenty. More than I had ever anticipated, I'll say that. Great. So, Great. The, the, yeah, this is just something I never understood exactly. Of the Yellowstone line, which you're, you oversee, correct? Correct. That's a, but you are distilling elsewhere than from here, or but the Yellowstone is uh, the Yellowstone Select is a blend of ours and some source. Okay. It, it will eventually, we'll do a bottled and bond Yellowstone, which will be all from this, this Okay, so but, that, uh, it's going to be six years, and we're still a little way off from that. Right, and then uh, it's amazing how just in Ohio where we are, how much you keep the Yellowstone brand on the shelf. I mean, the, the amount of what you're dealing with, and then you're, like you said, you're got have some that, you know, but with that bottled and bond, if you're doing it all here, that's, that's right. especially going up with that production. And, and, and that's why it, it's uh, a little bit lengthy for our rollout of the bottled and bond, because we never made a lot to begin with. Right. You know, and so we have to get that, get our stocks up that we can and then we've been blending some in with the select. So we needed to get our stock up uh, where we can do that. So How many states do you distribute in now? We distribute to every state and a dozen or more countries. All right. That's, <laughs> that's quite a few. Yeah. 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 And then you come, yeah, I can imagine. Uh, we have great partners, you know, with Luxco. And, and uh, now, you know, Luxco was uh, purchased by NGP. Mm -hmm. So now we have, uh, you know, a, a, even a bigger part. Great resources, yes. But fortunately, for us, you know, operations here, uh, Luxco always took a, a pretty hands off approach and, and, and will continue to do so. Uh, so that's great. Well, you've got to give you credit for that hands off because <laughs> although it seems like they're hands off, I'm sure 
they come up with some really good ideas for you. They but do. you <laughs> it's a collaboration, you know, yeah. honestly, uh, with, with everything. You know, no no one person can do everything anyway. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, exactly. you have to have a great team, and, and, they're, and they're a great team. And, uh, one thing they do is all the paperwork, which I absolutely hate. <laughs> that, was, that was fantastic. <laughs> wow. <I can't. laughs> See, that being amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So as the overseer, how much tasting are you doing with the Yellowstone brand? Like, are you tasting daily, different barrel, like well, that type well, of thing? Well, when, we like, when we do bottling and batches, we, we taste it to make sure that they're uh, maintaining the, the profile that we set out for it to, to be. Uh, and then, like, we'll do, uh, each year we do the limited edition. This year, uh, limited edition will be out in... September or so, and uh, so I, was, I just finished tasting through that last month. So I just, just, we just pulled the barrel, uh, right. and uh, it's going to be finished in Amarone's back. It's re- really, really um, turned out well. So I haven't tasted the, the, the final two bottle product, but I've faced, tasted you know the prototypes that I put together. So, uh, and generally, they're pretty true. So I'm excited about that. So am I. <laughs> and we'll be back here in September. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, it was kind of a crap shoot. You know, I, I'm not really, but at, at some point, you know, when you put things in a barrel, you're, you're never really sure how, how they're going to turn out. Yeah. And with Amarone, you know, in theory, it works out great. Mm-hmm. But you never really know. And so, it, but it, I'm really pleased with the, the, the finished product. Well, that's excellent. That, that's, um, <laughs> well, the last one it was fin- You have to say what was it? The your last Arm- limited Ar- Ar- Armagnac. 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 Yeah. Okay, because you know I, <laughs> I don't know how many times I actually hear it to actually say it. You know, it's like you almost have to practice. Armagnac. I've said it so many times, I still can't get it out. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I get close. I, I joke. Uh, I was on an Italian uh, uh, podcast yesterday. And they had said, well, you need to try something, you know, say something like that. There is no way. And they, they said something, asked me to repeat it, and they just laughed because I was, like, so far <laughs> off. And I said, you know, I grew up in Kentucky, and I took English as my form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's really cool. You're on an Italian podcast. Yeah. Well, that's, right. that's something. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But, yeah. So now you're, um, you know, just the, when you come to the distillery, one of the things that uh, that is very prevalent is one the Yellowstone brand that you you guys take great pride in keeping that, and then what, and then the donations that were happening to the uh, national park, and then also it's your family heritage that is so unique in the distilling industry. And you know, can you go a little bit on the sure. two? Unbelievable families that you are. Really yeah, good at and, and, you know, uh, obviously with the last name Bean, you know that we go back to Jacob Bean, um, uh, who came to Kentucky in 1792 and sold his first whiskey in 1795. And um, everybody kind of knows if you're in whiskey, you know the, the story of Jacob Bean and uh, and of course uh, our cousins. But what a lot of people don't realize is that. Um, Jacob had three grandsons who were all in the business. And uh, that set three distinct lines in the Dean family tree. So you had uh, Jack, or John Henry Dean, who was the youngest. And he was actually the most successful at the time, in the late 1800s. And so Jack had a massive distillery just south of Bardstown. Uh, and it was early times. A lot of people don't realize early times goes back to the Dean. But um, Jack died rather young, and unfortunately, I just had one son who died the year after he did. So that line kind of ended with Jack and his son, and Brown Foreman has owned them since uh, early times since Prohibition. But I just know that it was just sold to Jack. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see what happens there. Well, at least uh, there for a little bit, they, they that had been pulled off, and they, they're uh, bobbled in bonds. You know, early times bottle and bomb bourbon is a pretty damn good bourbon. And I was, you know, you were just kind of worried a little bit. Right. But all of a sudden, it started showing back up. So mm-hmm. that was a good yeah. thing. I'm that, that at least they're 
they made Stronger an effort to yeah, keep it I, on the shelf. I have, I, I hope so. Cause I, you know, it was uh, when it was barreled and used Cooper. It was a little disappointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that, it was no longer. It was just early times whiskey. But right. that bottled and bond kind of brought that yes. whole thing back, yeah. and it's got a nice flavor profile. And then the, the middle grandson was David, and that was Jim Beam's uh, father. Of course, we all know how that story ended up. Mm-hmm. And then our ancestor was Joseph. He was the oldest of that generation, the oldest grandson. Uh, and we found uh, just recently the receipt from when his father died, uh, the auction, and Joseph actually bought his father's uh, still. At the auction. Yeah, but his his father David, who was the father of all three of them, uh, his son, uh, w- died without a will, and so his property was sold on the Washington County Courthouse step, you know, at, the, at auction. So he he found that he bought the, the still. It was kind of funny because some Willis bought some whiskey, and there were just funny names that pop up in oh, yeah. urban history that were there. Wow. Especially in this area, mm-hmm. it's almost like they're always going to pop up in history because they've been here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's, they're, and, it, and they're not going anywhere. Right. They, well, it's, it's like when everything turned in the 50s, when you got the car and the fan and everything, everything kind of spread out. There was a lot of spreading out, but it seems like recently there's a lot of condensing back into the area. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, there were, you know, my parents left this area. You know, they, they grew up in southeastern Nelson County. Uh, my dad in New Haven, my mom in a little town called New Hope. And uh, they left, and, and everybody left because there was no work. You know, a lot of the distilleries were, were, were closing down in the smaller ones. They, the brands were being bought by bigger distilleries, and they were closing the smaller distilleries down. And that area kind of revolved around that. So there was no job, so they my parents left uh, to go to uh, Louisville. So I grew up in Mulch. Okay, okay. What did your father do? Uh, well, he worked in, uh, for uh, at the Atherton Build the Story for just a short time. Okay. And then he went on to uh, work as an office manager for General Motors okay. in uh, different uh, uh, dealerships, Price okay. of the Olds, and then what he was doing. But he liked the uh, uh, tie and dress shirt. Uh, office better okay. than the, the, uh, the story uh, with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> It's a different time period now. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. It certainly is. Because I love the distillery right now. <laughs> no, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that that's, uh, I mean, the ties and, and, and then what you've done here with limestone and how, you know, what the face that you put on a distillery that you, in your family, you know, and then what's going to happen going forward. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I find, you know, that's something that's so, the more that you understand how generational this is, and then the time periods, although when we're all living in your, we think our time period is always the most important thing, but whiskey goes beyond time of your time and my time. It, because it just generational keeps going, right. and it's it, and it doesn't change that much. It, I mean, there's a lot of mo- like what's happening in the distillery today. They've taken all the modern uh, manufacturing, you know, fresh, you know, whatever. But still, it comes down to it's still a still, and we're still uh, va- evaporating and making. It's just you get better at making more, or people can adjust things. And but they've always been doing that, right? Right. Right. Yeah, and uh, that's what I, I say with a, a brand like Yellowstone that's been around since 1872, uh, and almost 150 years, coming up on 150 years next year. Uh, there are a lot of stewards for the brand. Yeah. So that's what I, I look at myself for at this moment in time, I am the steward for this brand. Okay. And so I take that response, uh, uh, you know, you don't say it lightly. No, yeah. Very, yes. <laughs> so I have a question. Uh, I've seen you do a lot of podcasts. You've been with Fred Minnick and Michael, you know, talked with Michael Beach. Uh, what do you think 
uh, as far as the outside people and what's their value to the industry? Do you think that that importance, I mean, does it seem like, I don't know too much about how, the, what people were writing about back then. It seems like some of it was limited, but do you think that the people writing today, that it's just going to keep going now that, you know, media's in it and everything and they'll, there'll be certain people that'll be associated with it, or do you think it'll just kind of fade off and go into another... But you know, I, I hope it stays strong. I, I think it will. And, uh, you know, I, I love different people writing about it because it brings different perspectives. You know, everybody has a different perspective, a different area of interest. You know, that, uh, you know, and so it's just nice to get different viewpoints and, and, uh, and opinions and things. So it's, it's the most of them. Yeah. Most of them. Well, it's like, yeah, I, I, I find that, you know, everybody doesn't like all whiskey. I mean, they're not. You can't. It's one industry you're in where you can't please everybody, and you're not trying to please everybody. But it's when the, so, some certain person is displeased, they all, it's how they react to you, like somehow you are offending them or something like that. And it's just, that's the hard part. Right. No, I, I, I've learned, I've, early on, I've, I've learned to develop a, a thick skin, and you know, you know you, that's why there's so many different versions, right? And, and so many different whiskeys, you know, because they they don't uh, appeal to everybody, right? And they can't, you know. And uh, there's no, it, I think personally, I think the more you try to appease more people, the weaker the you know the whiskey becomes. Yeah, uh, that's my opinion. You know, I I have always said I make what I like. And I hope yeah. there's enough people out there that uh, that enjoy the same thing. I do. And uh, I think I think that's a really real. I've heard I've heard you say that, and it makes total sense. Yeah. I, I, I mean, from for me personally, when it comes to a rye whiskey, I'm not a fan of rye whiskeys. I've tasted, I've found rye whiskeys, but I'm up front, you know, because right. a lot of times we're tasting and whatever. And I, but it's not. It's not like somebody else can't like a rye whiskey. Right. And I understand that. It's like you, you, everybody should be, you should never drink a whiskey because someone told you it was good and then right. you don't like it and you still act like it's good. Yeah. It's just not how it should work, right? Right. You, you can, so for bourbon, I've never found a, I've never drank a bad bourbon. I say that all the time and people come up with, you haven't had this, this, and this. And it, okay, so right. But there's only, there's only better bourbons for me, right? I've yeah. had some bad. Well, okay, I believe, you. and then I, I'm sure with tasting, I'm uh, what there's probably bad barrels, right? Like you there, there are some that are, are you know a little bit off. Or different yeah, things. and I mean I've never I've never gotten any barrel I've ever tasted out of is always brought out, and it's already probably one of the top barrels to taste from. <laughs> We've been fortunate, you know, we're very few and far between. But, you know, right, right. Like, oh, it has to. I mean, uh, you can't get around it. You know, one of my favorite stories is. Uh, Joseph Dean, who was minor case Dean's younger brother. Okay. Uh, so Joseph grew up as minor cases. He started at early times with his uncle Guy. He came to the master distillery at minor cases distillery and early times. And uh, he was Joe went to Mexico. He took I took the distillery to Mexico uh, during Prohibition and and still down there after Prohibition. He came back. He had seven sons plus my grandfather who was like a son to him, and they were the beans that went out to all the different distilleries and helped them get started and helped the industry get started back on its feet because they had that knowledge and you know a lot of a lot of things have changed but they, they had that knowledge on how to get the distilleries back up and going but uh, when he passed away he, uh, the family received a letter from Kathy Van Winkle and it, you know talked about how great the story was and you know, and different things. And, uh, but he said he had, was very thankful that, that they came and helped them to get the, the, the story back up and running. And he said, except for that first batch, we made really great whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so I figure, you know, the dough that has raw fats, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> I always wondered what happened to that first batch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see. Uh, uh, you have to even even when uh, the difference in the distillery now than two years ago, you were fermenting in different. You were the, some of the you know different 
now you have the cups up there right. and whatever and then you have a larger still right. everything you know as you evolve but do you find that now that you know the equipment you've been here for it and you just kind of that 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 helps make better whiskey for you because it, it does you know um i tell the uh, the distillers that we have working you know under this room, uh, that uh you know, a distillery is, is like a uh, an organism, a breathing organism, mm -hmm. and you need to get it. Yeah, don't you, worry about it. You, you need to get that rhythm because it, it, it has a natural rhythm from the the, the cooking and to the mashing and the firm the fermenting and the distilling. And when that rhythm is working, you are producing great whiskey and a lot of. But if you get a hiccup, you know, and you, the fermenter stops or something. It, it, it just throws everything off, and it's like throwing a wrench into a, you know, oh, a cup. Yeah, it's yeah. and that just makes for fun days. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, it's a, I, I'm a plant manager of a recycling facility, and you know, there's a baler, and it's lots of the stuff that you use. We're using hydraulics, and you know, and and it's the same thing. It's like those days you just go. Well, I wish I had fast forward. I know I got to get it fixed. It's going to get fixed, but the stress of watching everything back up is just—it's a lot. And it's the same thing with you guys. It's just like if something's—if something's backing you up, the whole process has to flow. Right. And now you know we have uh, the, a new still, mm -hmm. so you know, and every still is different. So that's that takes a little bit of, of learning, um, and uh, so. But luckily, you know, it's a, a Vendome still. They, they know what they're doing. So, right. you know, we know it's uh, a great, great product to work with. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they are. There's no doubt. They're, you never hear a bad thing about Vendome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> From everything they make. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, so. you know, you had asked, and I'm sorry, to, but you had asked about the families, and I didn't mention the dance family. And my mother... Would not be happy if I did not. Well, not you know, 100%. I wasn't yes. going to let you get away with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we talked about the beans, and um, then so J. W. Dan also started. He was a pioneer of the store as well. Started 1836, and uh, he's my great great grandfather. And uh, he had seven sons. Seems like seven was the magic number for yeah, I don't know. It sounds but, like uh, so he had seven sons who were all master distillers including my great grandfather, uh, and but his oldest son uh, started the story in Gethsemane, Kentucky. It was called Cold Spring, and he started distilling pretty much exclusively for Taylor and Williams, which was a uh, rectifier bottling house in Louisville. And eventually, uh, as Taylor and Williams would retire, he, uh, Bernard Damp, would buy Taylor and Williams out and merged Yellowstone just became uh, synonymous with Taylor and Williams. But Yellowstone was named after, I mean, I'm really rambling, but uh, let me get back keep to Keep rambling. <laughs> yeah, keep rambling. So, but anyway, so Bernard's opened to the story, Cold Spring in Gethsemane, Kentucky in the 1850s. In 1872, Taylor and Williams had a salesman, and his name was Charles Townsend, so this is documented, and he came back and was, you know, everybody was so excited about the Park, the new national park, America's first park. Uh, people were very excited, and he, and he said, "You know, if we named one of our bourbons Yellowstone, we would sell a lot of bourbon." So, in 1872, they named one one of their bourbons Yellowstone, and it quickly became their best selling bourbon. Wow! And uh, and so that's the the rest of history. It's been on what the a shelf. marketing genius! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, just even. The bottle is so, you know, the artwork that you're using from, you know, the bottle, beautiful. Uh, the right. different parts of Yellowstone have been on it, but I, yeah. usually it's the Upper Falls, I believe. Lower Falls. Lower Falls, Lower yeah. Falls, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we are very fortunate. You know, the the logo um, is the original logo. They had really strong and great graphics throughout their history. The, right. the stewards of the brand, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, there's some strong labels from the 60s and 70s. Now, did they partner with artists that did National Park artwork? It almost seems like somehow that that artist that was creating it probably created artwork for the National you know, Park or no. I, I'm not sure, but that lo that that font style and logo is, is very... Uh, 
reminiscent of the time and the, the artwork time. that was being produced right. for those national and, parks. And I'm not sure who did who did that. I know that uh, the Coca Cola logo was uh, developed here in Kentucky. Okay. The person who did that. So I don't know, you know if there's a uh, a link or not, but that that was the style of, of that period. So before, just a little, I, I'm I was in commercial art and now I do fine art, but, and then I went into this, but. And then I'm tying my fine art career to bourbon and whiskey and doing stuff like that. But uh, when I was in uh, commercial art, our studio, if you remember the, the Pepsi ball, um, before what it is now, where it looks like a Pokemon kind of flat thing, but that, that graphic of it 3D, mm-hmm. our studio and myself with uh, my cousin, we actually came up with that logo. Okay. So that was a really cool thing. A 30-year... Endeavor, you still on some of the Pepsi trucks can see that logo, but right. uh, so lots of fun. Yeah, so, there you go. Yeah, it, now it, you met the guy, yeah. you bet. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we were just very fortunate that, that they had you know great uh, packaging, great marketing. You know, uh, a lot of people don't realize that Yellowstone was the number one selling bourbon in Kentucky in the 1950s and 60s. It was such a strong seller that a third of all the bourbon sold in Kentucky in the 1960s was Yellowstone. That's, so that's, a, a, pretty, that's a pretty big feat right yeah. there. Yeah. Now, they now they do drink Yellowstone, I believe, on the show Yellowstone sometimes, right? That's what it... You know, I've been told that. I've never seen that. Not yet. But, uh, you know... But you do I, advertise I, I, We do it. advertise. Yes. But I, I think I've seen it, too, a couple yeah. times. So, so that, people tell me that, so I, you know, I'll believe it. But, but we do advertise on it. And yeah. It, that was just kind of one of those uh, serendipitous uh, things that happened, you know. <laughs> now, did they approach you, or did you approach them? Uh, we approached them for the advertising. Okay. And that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah, that's awesome. Well... That's a little, I think we covered a good amount of the history. Yeah. Uh, but now we can get to the, well, go well, ahead. One thing, I just wanted to see if maybe Roxy might have some uh, questions from anybody well, we, on Facebook. Or? We don't have any questions, but uh, Tim Dan says, hey, happy Friday <laughs> from Dallas, Texas. Good. good morning, cuz, and Mr. Mueller, cheers. <laughs> cheers, <laughs> cheers. He wondered what the noise was in the background, and I thought that was a funny question. <laughs> That's actually the, the, the cooker. That's what, what I said. I said, I think, some, I think that's the yeah. <laughs> bourbon's cooking back here. Um, let's see. We had uh, Oldman Bay say good morning to us. Okay. And he said that the history and the stories, he loves that. And, of course, bourbon is delicious. So, um, <laughs> and right. he said that uh, you were, when you were talking about um, how, who likes what types of bourbon, he said he had that discussion with the... Guys from my whiskey den just uh, recently, and then Alan said, um, "Tell Steve I said much love," and then he was having trouble hearing the audio. So. <laughs> Alan Bishop, yeah, 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 well, yeah we know. Um, on the podcast, I'll remove all the background noise. I can do that, yeah. but on the Facebook Live, we just have yeah, to. We, we just we've have been to just trying to talk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, and yeah, you know, I, I know at some point. You know, you said you didn't care for rye whiskey, but at some point we need to try the mi- minor case rye. Well, is- no. I will, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'll be honest. I, honestly, because I've had some rye whiskey that I like. Right. So it's just, I, I'm not a, I, like, for instance, I'm not a fan of dill. Like, you taste dill or that that almost like it's a, a green celery. Vet. That's just right. not my thing. And then that's very... Uh, prevalent in, in some rides, you know, rides. right? But where it's like I've had a couple rides where I just wanted to spit it out, you know, kind right. of thing. But I don't do that, and so <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is minor case rye, and it was named after minor case bean. Mm-hmm. My great grandfather, he was Jim Bean's first cousin. People like to know how that was always get that question on how that relates. And uh, so this is a fifty-one percent. Well, you're not, it's not a, you it's know, not heavy a rye. 90%. No, okay. 90, 70, most, a lot of rye are 95, 75 to 95% rye. There's 51% rye, 45% corn, and then finished in a sherry cask. Well, Ooh, from a nose, good. from yeah. a nose. Yeah, you, know, you, can, you can really get that in the nose. Oh, the yeah, you get the yeah, sherry, really comes sherry. across mm-hmm. on the nose. Um, no, that doesn't smell bad at all. 
and so it's a uh, well, nice like the it, color is like a like a strong, uh, like, like a like a nice beer like yeah. that's like a like the rich yeah golden beer. Golden. but the uh, the sherry is actually a cream sherry it's from Myers Winery in Cincinnati Ooh. so it's uh, kind of an unusual it's an all American product. Even, even the sherry can. Now, how does that actually happen, that association with the winery in Cincinnati? You just were at the winery and loved their but wine? They, or they, were, uh, they were uh, partners with Lux at the Okay, time. okay. So there was a synergy there. And okay. uh, they had diff- a lot of different casts that we could choose from, but the sherry worked really well with the vine. And it's kind of funny, though, they, they take the sherry, put it in ex bourbon barrels, it sits outside in Cincinnati for four to five years. Then they dump it, and then we take the barrels and put the uh, rye. Okay. So just getting back to, real quick, Lux Cup. Yes. So are they, I mean, is it the family still running the distillery, or are they out? Uh, so Don sold Lux Co., uh, and now is uh, on the board of the Okay, so he's still... There and right. then I would say his his son his son is still with Luxco. Okay, so well. so not much is changing as far as the actual right. dis- the, the Luxco itself, you know, uh, still is maintaining the, the, everything that they want. Right, because they were they were in the middle of making an, you know, you guys too. I mean, they're making fantastic bourbon, but that's another great thing about I know, and I understand why MGP would want to purchase this because right. it puts them into. Nobody has to say, well, you don't have any Kentucky. <laughs> You're from Indiana. Yeah, they, Even they, though they've been producing, the limestone's there, and they've been producing just fine yeah, wherever. They, but they, it's they just, made great, great it's, whiskey, and, yeah. and you know that because it's in so many bottles. They know what they're doing, but at the same time, you know, you, yeah. they, this puts them in a different a different light, that well, they have it all covered now. Right. Well, let's go, you know, really strong sales team, sales and marketing, and that's what, why we've done so well. And, uh, you know, that's what they bring to the table. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's good. So that does not have the celery. Mm-hmm. No, that's got a sweet, really, really sweet nice, honey. sweet, nice. Mm-hmm. Honey. It's honey. You're right. Yeah, honey right up front. Mm. And the finish that's is sweet. Very good. Yeah, I'm not going to. finish, maybe the little no. white pepper. Yeah. And some, dry, uh, some dried fruit. Yeah. Maybe, maybe some fig or raisin mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, you get a little bit of spice in the rye. So all minor case tastes like this. This is minor case. Is so minor when I case. see it on my shelf, I'm going to pull that down. Yeah, that, that, that it's it, very good. It, it, I, the bottle that I got in September that you signed, I hadn't even had a chance to open it yet. Yeah. I, I do so much one, bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now Gosh, the logo just amazing. now is white. Right. It's got the white on there. You put yes. the white. Has that helped your sales? It has. Because you know, I, I noticed that just from seeing it always on the shelf, and then when you switched over, their half had no white, and the other half, and it just has to get more catchy. Yes, yeah. I had. I would go into one of a liquor store or a bar, and know they had minor case rye, mm-hmm. and I couldn't find it on the shelf or, or on the back bar. And I know what I knew what I was looking yeah, for. It's your <laughs> bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, but with the white, it just really just popped. And um, the the thing about the white too. Uh, on the raised lettering, it's really reminiscent of those old bar back bottles like we have out in, on the display. You know, because they would hand uh, glaze those, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. they'd have that raised white lettering. So it's re- really a throwback to that uh, time. As, as a kid, there was a couple times where they had these like depots that would train stations, but then some of, they did like a glass dump back there. So we would go back there and there would be all these old glass bottles. And it just reminds me of when we were going through that, those bl- bottles, you know, thinking we found treasures somehow. <laughs> but yeah. And then those, that's the, the same, the same, you know, old bottle feel. I mean, that's, and that's just what whiskey is. I mean, it just takes you right back. There's, there's an old Yellowstone bottle. Uh, because the, the, the history of that barback bottle was um, that the distilleries would send a barrel of whiskey to a hotel or a bar, and they would keep the, the barrel in the back room on the cellar, and they would glass was so expensive that they you would get one bottle 
to keep on the back of the bar. Oh, and then they would fill, refill that bottle. And so some of those, uh, some of those bottles are treasure. When we have the, uh, yeah. this old Yellowstone bottle, uh, maybe we can look at that later, but, um, is, uh, you know, I've seen them go for over $7,000. It's amazing, isn't it? What you just yeah, hold on yeah, to yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so one of our Facebook Live watchers says that you should make a video of the all that history that you're talking about. Like a, like well, a some of I mean, come to the Yellowstone, <laughs> the, the Limestone Branch Distillery. They have a video with the history and a little museum right outside the door, right, right. there. And we just um, we just did. I just we just released the. A video of me on YouTube actually that uh, has me going through all the the packaging of Yellowstone from when it was actually in a jug, you know. The, the, oh, uh, so okay. we have it. So we we're fortunate to have you know a jug of from the Cold Spring Distillery. It wasn't even called Yellowstone at that time. You know the, the pottery jug, yeah. and then uh, the far back bottle. Excuse me, hey Eric, will you get that Yellowstone bottle, the far back? Thank you. But, uh, oh, yeah, don't drop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, and I and I walk through all that packaging through through that. It, it's really amazing. Oh wow! Yeah, I have to check that out. What's What's also really amazing is it's uh, ten eighteen. I'm doing this is this is my vacation, and it's it's been an awesome. Like the first two, this is the third start of the third day. It's just been nonstop, and we've just been having such a blast. Yeah. Like it's ten eighteen. And we're drinking whiskey. And that's something you don't do all the time. No, I'm sure a lot of times. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm trying usually trying our, to stop my employees from drinking yeah. whiskey at ten eighteen. Our, our first barrel fix are at nine thirty. So. Oh man! Oh wow! <laughs> so here here is that Yellowstone bottle, oh, and gorgeous. and this would be yeah. hand painted wow. and then fired. Yeah. You know. Uh, just absolutely beautiful, and this yeah, would have been awesome. uh, probably gone to a really nice hotel or bar, say the Palmer House in Chicago or some, something. Yeah, you know. yeah, you're not going to be just distributing that. That's yeah, hand right. painted. Someone's painting. What, what year this, was that? That'd been the late 1800s. Late 18s. Yeah, and then this would have been you know would have gone to your corner bar. Right. Yeah, you can cool. yeah, just imagine bar. how much money that painter would be making if yeah. he painted every one. <laughs> Yeah, I often wonder how now they, they did But that. then they, they would just take those bottles and keep filling them, correct? Correct. Just be, that would be the display bottle, and then just, they would they purchase a barrel? They, and they, they bought a the, barrel, and then you, you got a bottle, and you fill from the front. Okay, now, back of course, in the back and fill it. If you, you can imagine that uh, not all bottles got filled with the, the right uh, yeah. product. So yeah. that's when yeah. uh, Garvin Brown, or, yeah. Garvin? Yeah, Garvin Brown, Brown. Uh, decided that when glass became inexpensive enough that he was through with sending the barrels in the bottle, that he was going to uh, bottle and make sure that people got a bottle of his stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the whole thing with uh, that, that, and then the Bottled and Bond Act, and the whole thing with, you know, Colonel Taylor and all that. Yeah, that's that changed uh, uh, bourbon history right there. Right. Just yeah. like the it's like they always talk about the resolution by Congress in 1964, where they just clarified that problem that Jack Daniels was bourbon and everything. You know, what I found that funny because other than that, everybody knew exactly what bourbon was, except everybody had already deemed Jack Daniels but wasn't. But then in 1964, they must have paid a hell of a lot of money for it to be called, and then say it's not the whole time since then. You know, it's uh, funny when you bring the, the 1964 up because. Uh, that one of the, the uh, factors in that of becoming a, uh, the national product was that the story that Joe Bean started down in Mexico. Oh, wow. Because uh, they were producing bourbon in Mexico, Mexico, and the American distillers <laughs> were really upset about that. And uh, so they, that, they pushed it. I did and not know that. Every congressman. Yeah. Uh, and it was all congressmen back then. But, right. uh, every congressman <laughs> voted against uh, for it, except for one, and it was the Dallas congressman in, from New York. 
<laughs> and the Dow and going to the story in Mexico. Yeah, the, in Mexico. Yeah, this there you go. That was, that, there were no politics back then. But, but okay, so that, that resolution to me, though, uh, I wish that every industry would have made a resolution like that. Like, we live in Canton, Ohio, and the Hoover Vacuum Company. They were there when we moved there and whatever. But then when the whole Chinese thing happened, they were forced, they shut down, and they started making Hoover vacuums in China. And for me, if they would have had a resolution that vacuums, Hoover vacuums could only be made in the United States like they did. They, they didn't, I don't think they realized that they saved this industry, but they did with that resolution. Yes, it, there's other bourbons and spectacular bourbons now being made in the United States. Right. But Kentucky, so when... Sazerac and everybody's buying into this. Yes, you can have foreign entities buying in, but you got to leave it alone. Right. Then you you, even the families stay, they yeah. left yeah. alone. So we we're still distilling through generations of families, and they have aspects, but it's still here in the United States, exactly. and that's just not it it's not going country. anywhere else. Right. I mean, they that is one hundred percent that resolution. Right. Other everywhere else, they make bourbon. They call it corn whiskey. Right. And that just doesn't sound nowhere near. Really cool. <laughs> we found out that that's, that's where it came from when he took it down to Mexico. Yeah, he took yeah. it down to Mexico, yeah, and, they, yeah. and then the, the plant stayed there. He, yeah. he came back, but the plant stayed It's starting to smell really good in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's really smelling good. Yeah, we always love that match. Yeah. Right. So, right. All right. so, what's next? So what's next? Yeah. Oh, so... Uh, Show us what's next on the bottom. She poured here. the... Your, uh, this is the... the the distillery pack, right? Okay, yes. This is so we do we do single barrel. You didn't bore me. <laughs> well, you, I can't get you. Hey, I'm not I'm not pouring for you. You you know what you're drinking, man. I, so, you should be pouring for me. So, <laughs> so, yeah. Not not in that sense. Just so that I stay sober here, because he pours for me. And look at it. I mean, man. I guess I'm driving again. Well, of but, course. <laughs> The, the good thing is this is not a full size compare. Yeah, we don't have right. abnormally large. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is and the big podcast. Yeah. <laughs> We're not giants here. Today. <laughs> so uh, this is the yeah. So uh, we do a, a allow uh, you know bars, restaurants, uh, liquor stores to come in and pick a barrel, and when they do, they get this. It's a special label that. Just for those girl picks, it's the black with the, the red yellow stones. So I think people see that; those are really, really fantastic bottles. And uh, single barrels, generally in the five-year range. Okay. Uh, so, so what's mostly in the regular Yellowstone? What is it's what's a, the it, Yellowstone is a blend of four and seven. Four so and seven. Not four so two seven. Four, four and, and seven. seven. All right, yeah. Because it's always, I always find it unique how people go about the blending. And everybody has a different way because there's about a trillion different ways to do it. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I blended the Yellowstone Fleck uh, that way. And, and the four-year-old, for lack of a better word, is a, you know, a little rougher. And you get the grain that comes through, really stands up beautifully in a cocktail. Mm. And then uh, the seven, you know, gives it, the, the mellowness and that smoothness, you know, yeah. like, kind of like a wedding, you know, a rough and, you know, something hard and smooth. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but anyway, uh, so it, it's a great all-purpose for them. These, the single barrels, of course, every time you get a single barrel, it's going to be different. Right. Yep. Uh, you know, you have a, you know, a, a general aspect of where it's going to be, but they're all going to be different. And so, uh, these are, there's been some great questions. So, I, I, everybody, even uh, uh, Steve Coons, I've talked to, and right now in the whiskey industry, how it's <laughs> how it's uh, how it's evolving. It's like even at three, four years ago, uh, and then what was leading up. I mean, the part of the skill of like the Booker knows of that time was making a consistent whiskey that tastes the same all the time. That was like their goal, and now. What's happened is in the last three or four years, the, like if you would have done even like I said when I first got into it, it was been a barrel finished and it was no longer bourbon. There's a ton of people that wouldn't even touch it. It's not bourbon. But what's happened in this last couple of years is you put it in in the different barrels and the finishes. 
people are just loving that aspect. But then the single barrels, I mean, you know, if you're if you're making it, they're, they're, you're not selling a single barrel. But if you do a store pick, it is a single barrel of something that you can't get a single barrel. And those barrels, I take it. Um, so who's responsible when of pulling the barrels that are going to become so, a single barrel? So we, uh, I'm responsible for all of those. So okay. We pull the barrels and then we pick them out. And then we uh, allow the customers to send a pick from what you who pick. are picking. So... So I was talk. I was at my first ever barrel pick uh, about a couple weeks ago with Freddie. It was not Creek, and Freddie was there for the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, and he went into exactly. So, do you like let your warehouse manager know where you think the best barrels are and have him pull them? Because that's what he was. He's like, pull it from here, pull it from here. Let me see, and then if it's not, when, is that kind of how it works? Well, it depends on what what we're doing. Okay, now when you're making Yellowstone, do you have do you have certain places Yellowstone is aging in those warehouses that you pick specifically well, for Yellowstone? All, all the bar barrels uh, from Limestone Brands are aged in uh, at much lower. Right. In their right. Yeah, yeah. So and, and and we go from top to bottom floor, kind of in the back there. And uh, F- Stephen Fonte, our bourbon ambassador, always gets John, uh, tells everybody when they go to the Lux store, he says, you know where the best bourbon in that warehouse is, don't you? It's in the back there. <laughs> <laughs> right where all y'all Just to get after right. John. Right. Right. John right. Right. the master is still over at uh, Lux <laughs> Row. Lux <Row>. Okay, so. <laughs> so. I if you could tell us what, what's uh, special about the, you named these bar- these. Uh, oh, yeah. So this one, this one is named Bosley. Okay. And Bosley was my pal. He was, uh, the cream chow you see sometimes in videos that we had, and he was here from, um, uh, I had uh, adopted him, uh, rescued him, uh, you know, shortly before we started this journey, and he was, he's been on the property, he was on the property from day one, and okay. greeted everybody up, and he passed away about two years ago. Okay. So, and so this is named after Bosley. Okay. Cheers to Bosley. Cheers to Bosley. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So now we have Char and Kate. Yes, and we met yes, them. Yes, and we met them. Very friendly. <laughs> and what fruit is this? Uh, good question. We we offer the single barrels in uh, 102, 109, and 115. Okay. So this is 115. Yeah, this is 115. this is drinking like 115, but it's really yeah. the vanilla on it. Now, that, once again, so I, I did like the, uh, your, the rye. I right. did. I mean, I did, but this just puts it to shame. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> this is really delicious. Did you, really you, you have to like this. Yes, I agree. There's a lot of chocolates. A lot, I think I, on the nose and on the finish. Not too much spice, but enough spice to give it a, you know, a nice mm-hmm. hug. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, the long finish. Very good mouthfeel on it, too. Some, yeah. uh, the corn comes out in the finish. That's good. So, yeah, I do like it. Now, just, do you allow, like, groups, like, Groups to come in and do the barrel picks, or is it just we we do have some uh, bourbon societies and things. Okay, because so we're, since we're co- trying COVID, to get that's there. What that's what we're getting at. Since COVID, no, uh, well, we, we had to restrict it down. We, to, we, we stopped for a little while, uh, but then we are back at it. We do okay. uh, we do them on the porch, which is kind of frosty in the. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then that just makes the whiskey drinking more, more fluid, and more by the time everybody does it, doesn't matter what it is. Bit, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, and we do a we have a, a great approach to it too. Because we'll take uh, three barrels uh, that when they, people come in, and we'll do them at the three different fruits. So they'll have nine different uh, selections okay. oh, that they can nice. choose from, and it. Changes dramatically from 102 to 109 to 115. Mm-hmm. What you like at 102, you may not like at 10, 115, and what shines at you know 109, you know falls flat everywhere else. So, so just like when we were doing the barrel pick, 120. Uh, the first one was 120.2, the second one was 122.5, and the third one was 133.7. That 133.7 was phenomenal. But at the same time, that was going to come back down to 120. So we ended up picking the 122.5 because that's close. You know, you're because, stay the same, right? right. And, it, and one thing, uh, the women, I find, 
love high proof bourbon. <laughs> All the women at the pick were at 133.5. 130, yeah, whatever. exactly. So <laughs> that was kind of really a cool And it thing. wasn't as good when I put some water in it. So you know if they proofed it down, it was going to lose. Oh, of course. You know, right. I mean, the 133.5, uh, not great with at the time. It's going to taste fantastic. You don't really get the. There's no barrel strength. Right. You just tasted something that no. You know. But at the same time, it's going to come back down to 120, mm-hmm. and you know that has to that has to factor into your. That's why you give each one at three different proofs. Yeah, and and, and and they are able to actually taste it. You know, sometimes people go to barrel picks and they're like, okay, this is 120. Add a little bit of water to it, and you can kind of get, get an yeah. idea. Well, you know, this is they taste it at what proof they're going to get. It You've done it for them. Yes. And I've definitely Wonderful. found that out myself that, you know, different fruits, different flavors pop at different fruits oh, and, sure. you know, and come out at different fruits. So, Absolutely. And in and, and the blending, too. Yeah. Like when I blend for the uh, the limited edition. Not so much when you're doing uh, barrel finish, but when we blend just straight bourbon. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll pick out, say, the majority is just a, a, a good, beefy base. I call you know just a great bourbon flavor, and yeah. then you start picking anomalies out of these barrels. You know that something has a great nose, or something that you know, has a great finish, or you know really shines in the middle, and then you try to blend those together. Well, it would be great if what had a great nose when you blended it together saved a great nose, yeah. but sometimes it completely disappears. Mm-hmm. So it is really a, 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 an art, and I I really think uh, people. Don't appreciate the the blending. I you know. Yeah, oh. I have learned to and found out how much work it, it goes into it and is well become just Yellowstone brand. Okay, appreciate it. It's like you tasted it so much, you knew what you tried to do, but then when you first started, was it something that was difficult to do the next batch to keep it? This I mean, I've been tasting a lot of whiskeys, and now after a couple of years. I, I my palates evolved, and there's certain times and certain places where all of a sudden you can taste this or you can taste that. But to get that consistent, is there like pressure on you, or do you just know what you're? What, right now, it's like in your brain. You know what it's supposed to taste like, we, we and have, then you taste. Yeah, it. It, it, it pretty much. We try to get the same thing every time. You know, the, the anomalies come and the unique unicorns and the limited this and the single okay. barrels, but you know. You want something, you know, when people buy a, a name brand, then they, they want, want it the to, same to, thing. The, yeah, they want the same thing. Yeah. Right. yeah. Single and, barrels are, are so, even like the single barrel going into like now people sell, you know, the brands sell actual single barrels. When you're going to take a single barrel, you're never going to get that taste again. Never again. I mean, we, we there, there's a store pick we, we, I, we picked up and it's, it, there was French toast in it, but it, it was actually an Ohio State pick because in Ohio we don't get the store picks, right. but the state pick, and it was so good, but it's gone. Right. You're and, not going to yeah, taste that again. It's one it, barrel, and it's gone. People don't realize, you know, when it when it's a single barrel pick, you're talking about 200, 225 bottles. Yeah, period. that's it. That's, that's it. it. Yeah, that's all there ever Once will that be. Once flavor is gone, it's gone. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. We did no problem. <laughs> Here to look at the okay. internet. Okay. <laughs> don't take the internet down. Don't take it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give us ten minutes and then take yeah. it down. <laughs> so yeah, this is. Um, I actually, when I was here dropping off your bourbon balls last time, it, the and uh, I picked up the the pick in the and I haven't opened it yet, but I think I will be. <laughs> I, I think that was corky. You have this at home. Yeah. Corky, yeah. corky. Yeah, Porky. Oh, well, yeah. so okay. So the one that's, that's in different. there right now is it's Bosley. Bosley. It's Bosley. So, I, so this is different. So yes. all right. Yes. Yeah, all right. That's what I, was say. I can okay. buy another bottle. Yeah, that's what it's she said she's not going to be mad at me. Yeah, I was going to buy it if you didn't. So <laughs> yeah. So for for the store picks, when we started, we started naming them after our animals here. So we had uh, Sweet Char, and then Just in Case. And then Louis Two Licks, which so the, the, the three yeah. dogs, and Corky, and now Bosley. So <laughs> you're yeah. a true being because you're going <laughs> to get in trouble. Because just think about when Booker started naming the batches, 
just think about now, all these years later for Booker's, and how hard it is to come up with another <laughs> name. It's just like, they got to be running, you know, it's like, it, what? We got to get another point. 30 some years, four, four or five, you know, yeah, exactly. 150. It's just like, <laughs> I do have a question. You want a uh, question? Absolutely. So, Bring it on. Um, is it all palette or is there technology to ensure consistency in your blended with it, This is all palette. You know, uh, there's not. We don't use a whole lot of technology, but I mean, uh, we're pretty basic. The, mo the most technology we have at, at this facility is our uh, thermometers, which are uh, you know computer controlled. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's that, that's everything awesome. Everything else is you know uh, sensory. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which uh, which that's the that's way it the, should yeah. be when you know doing the small batches that you do and. Yeah. and Get the best flavors, the best taste, and best quality. Well, I think I think your partnership with Luxco and now MVP plus what you set up here is really what where it's at. It's, right. it's just like you've taken modern, you know, the bourbon aspect, and it's just I I, I mean it's impressive. Put it well, that thank way. you. You know, it, it certainly wasn't anywhere. How much time? What? How much time? We're almost done. We, yeah. We're. Yeah, we're uh, coming to the end. Uh, we don't have. We finished what we're tasting, correct? Yeah. Right. So, yeah, yeah uh, probably about five, six minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> With no problem. Yeah, the internet. <laughs> no, I understand. At least, at least we have consistent internet here. We oh, had, yeah. so we've had several different services where it's just been pretty oh, yeah. pathetic. You know, we're out. We for people who don't know, the Limestone Branch is out in the middle yeah. of the country. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've had internet. We, we had one internet provider. Our, our internet went down, and they were like, well, it'll be a week before we get it back up. And I was like, you do realize that we, like, we run our cash registers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, my, and my people don't like running, writing tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and to add to this being out in the country, it's a really, like, quaint, Pretty distillery to visit. It's, it has a great gift shop. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed coming. Thank you. Know. Yeah. I think yeah. this is the most. So the ladies would like it, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. If you don't drink bourbon, come and get some like amazing smelling candles. And yikes, you gave me a heart attack. Especially <laughs> 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 well, when you hit that bottle. Yeah. Have an old fashioned at the bar. Come when it's sunny and beautiful Thank out. You. And you can sit out on this little patio. And well, you know when I you, when sir. I was. Designing the building and the experience, you know, I wanted a rural facility. Yep, that's it. Because I, I just wanted that, you know, I knew I was going to have to come here every day. Mm -hmm. So I wanted a place that I would want to come to. I mean, it's it's very, um, it's not as big, but it has that similar thing of Maker's Mark, you know. But it's not, you still can get cell phone service here. Right. <laughs> unlike, <laughs> unlike there. Yeah. And... You can take major roadways to get here, unlike that that distillery. Yes, and, yeah, you and don't have to run the off the road to get past. <laughs> out in the gift shop, you have a really cool ceiling. Uh, what did they do to make that ceiling look like stone up there? So it's kind that's of, just so cool. It, it, it's uh, it looks like the inside of a charred barrel. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. That, that's what it looks like. And it was. I would love to say that you know we planned it out that way and everything you know. But that was just one of those happy you know, accidents. Happy accidents. Happy accidents. Yeah. You mean, I mean, sure it's not number four char. It, it is not. a number four char. Okay. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, you know, we we had the, everything installed, the air conditioner and everything, and then they, they came in and uh, they were like, okay, or we're getting the air conditioner. Right? So we, we can either do two units or you can insulate this. Oh, we are, so already had this insulation. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, no, that's not enough. You need to do more insulation. Okay, well, we need to uh, uh, do some foam insulation, and then you can use this one unit. And I was like, okay, well, that makes sense uh, economically to put the foam insulation in. And I was thinking it'd be these nice, flat, no, uh, you know, things that. of foam. And they sent some, uh, anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that spray foam. We've yeah. all been yeah. there before. It looks like somebody yeah. took a, a can of a, a yeah, great spray stuff foam. Yeah. Spray yeah. Foam yeah. and just went. Well, I'm saying it looks like it was done on purpose, like you're inside of 
a rock wall at Yellowstone yeah, or inside right. of a char barrel. So just stick with that. No, it, it, was, it, 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 it does. It's absolutely fantastic. You, you paid uh, someone a million dollars to come up with that. Yeah, right? yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> What a happy accident! Yeah, that was cheers. That was one of the the, the better yeah, cheers. Yeah, accidents. I will cheers you for that. That, one I was that like, happened, oh, you know, because I'll tell you when it was white after they got oh, done, no. it was kind of white and yellow, and, yeah. and it was oh, just like yeah, oh. that is like the, the <laughs> most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. Like a and, like a burnt up bit of honey. Yes. <laughs> and, and so then the uh, the. The, the fire people say, well, you know, you need to put a uh, fire retardant on it. Oh. So, okay, so we have to paint it now. So I was like, okay, let's get that paint black. Yeah. Oh. yeah. There you go. There you go. So it became. So it became. So it's all about the textures. It is. And it looks really good. And, and it does. It's fantastic. It is. You know, I just, uh, I would love to say that I you know, designed that for the start. Yes. <laughs> one of those things. No problem. Oh, you guys are fine. All right. So I guess. Uh, do you have anything to add that you would like to put into a podcast or whatever? Or wow. have we so asked you, you like so many <laughs> questions? Well, over, yeah. I mean, we you know we we have enough that we can do it again. You know. Yeah. Uh, we love that. I, I could go because I, I I just touched on family history. Oh yeah. And, you know we did, we'd love we, to come know, back. We, where where we're, we're going next? To your relatives, um, Wally and Lynn, I, the, I've got the family tree from Tim Dan, and the, he, I mean, that whole 13 brothers and sisters with 20-some grandchildren, <laughs> which wow. basically in that time period put the whole family into a tailspin, and then now it's like, but that's once again, history. Which is so awesome because now it's all there where they all decided that they couldn't get, get along and get together and then it just the damn thing went bye bye. Now everybody's gotten back together to bring it back here. And 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 that was that's only seventy years, but in, in the time period of bourbon and of in down the line that'll be a part of the history, but that'll still be going. Right. And that's just that's the amazing no, and, part and, of it. And I always did my best to showcase the dance side oh, yeah. of my family uh, because they were, you know, very influential in, in the in industry. You know, right, especially right after Paul Bishop, probably one of the, the bigger families in the industry. Was it J.W. You tell this? Was he the one with the well and the dog and keeping the yeast? No, that was uh, Guy. Okay. Guy. Yeah, Guy, my grandfather. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, that story is just. So they so used to keep the the yeast jar because. Master distillers would carry their yeast home, and so he would keep it down in the cistern. And uh, so he, story has it that he had the dog there, you know, to keep people away from the the yeast in the cistern. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Well, I mean, that's just that a cool, so cool, cool yeah. such a cool story. And then, yeah. and then you, Alan said hi, and we were there yesterday, and he, he's been talking to you. But that's really cool that now people. Alan is all about finding different yeast strains, yes. and he just keeps, and he's such a master at naturally reproducing yeast and he's got so many good stories about how he learned how to do that blowing stuff up and what, <laughs> and uh, how he almost got divorced and stuff like that so it's really kind of cool that how it's uh, but at the same time you know the beams at jim beam they still use that liquid yeast right. uh, uh, um against intense pressure not to right. you know what i mean so it just you know that's a very important aspect of what everybody's doing. Right. Well, you know, the beans have always used their yeast and, and, and their techniques. And my grandfather was quite cantankerous, and he he moved from the story to the story after, especially after the prohibition. He would have loved the loved the, the the time period that we're in now, where people are actually appreciating things. Mm-hmm. Because right after prohibition, it's all about production, getting stuff out and things. And he, my dad said. A uh, guy made whiskey one way, the right way, and that was it. And he hit that he would not cut corners, and he left many a job if people were forcing him to do something that he didn't particularly care for. Make yeah. crappy whiskey that will sell because crappy whiskey will sell. Yeah. yeah. And, and but I mean, I, I don't. There's not much. Like I said, you go like when I first started this. You, I would walk into the the liquor store, and I had no idea. And then once once you start to 
evolve and start to beat, the, and then you start to know it all. And actually, it's funny because now it's now you go in there and it's almost boring because you know exactly what everything is, and you're looking for specific things, and it's not there. But you also know that everything there, no matter what people choose from the from the bottom shelf to the top shelf, it's it's still good and it, it serves its purpose. You know, and we've been very fortunate. You know, uh, the large distilleries here in Kentucky make fantastic whiskey. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so we, you know, and and it get, gave. The, the small craft distilleries, you know, a high bar, a high mm-hmm. standard to meet. Yeah. You know, so the Kentucky distilleries, you know, the, the small guys, you know, we have a high bar. Yeah. Right. It wasn't, you know, but like the, some of the beer where people said, you know, the big beer didn't have a lot of flavor. Right, right. You know, so, you know, but we had a high bar to get. No, there's no doubt. Plus, what's nice is that bar that they hit is the bar that they are always hitting, but bourbon is so expansive that there's so much more taste that you can do. They leave, they left that for the craft distilleries, yes. and that's the part where everybody hits into, and then that's what where us us whiskey kind of sewers or whatever we kind of have accepted all because I'm not looking. I'm always looking for a different taste, a different you know different note. You're trying to see if you can taste, uh, you know. Uh, different spices and uh, you know what what is it cardamom or or uh, what was the one that uh, you know you're just looking for all the different tastes right. and that's part of the fun of whiskey why it's evolved and you're part of bringing that in with the different finishes and the smaller you know batches right. I mean when we were here and he picked up the small batches I didn't know what he was doing that time <laughs> and he's got them he's like these are awesome I'm like oh, nice freaking missed it. So when I was here and you didn't ask, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, well, unfortunately, again, with the glass, I thought we had them. It's going to be mid-May before, okay. before we actually have well, them. Well, uh, we are back. We are coming <laughs> yeah. back down in September for the whole, before the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. We're going to be here all so if we, you, that would be a good time to, right. early in the week before it all starts to go crazy, because all, it's going to be crazy. All, all, yeah, I know. Everybody is so excited excited just to get out, you know, I mean, oh, and yeah. get out and move and, and, and be around people and, you know, without, you know, yeah. all the, you know, I, I think, I hope yeah. that at the that time we're just, right. we're yeah. still careful, but at the same time we're going to be at a point because it's the end of the summer and it's just going to be where it should be, right. you know, we'll be removed far enough from the it, whole thing. Everybody. So, so look, I did a dinner in uh, St. Louis a couple weeks ago. And uh, first dinner, you know, we've done in a long time because of, of COVID. And the people were just, and it was, you know, only 50 people and we were in this massive place of, you know, just door, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but people were just so happy to be, to be out and be in community, you know, yeah. and that, to and, communicate yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love, I love coming down here. This is the, the, like, we've been down here, like, this is the fourth time we've been down here since then, and just the hospitality and the friendliness. Yeah. And the, yeah. Everybody's careful and everybody, but at the same time, just the family feel is just unbelievable. Yeah. And so I would like to thank you very oh, much for your time this so morning. Yeah, yeah, so much for giving us the time because we know you're such a busy guy and all that. No, and and just, any time. And we'd love for anybody out there, you know, come through and visit the story. Uh, you know, it's a small story, like we've been saying, but I, I, I really think one of the great things about this story is all of the story is in one room. Yeah, yeah. you know, you come in and yeah. you really understand the process because it's hard to wrap for someone who, who doesn't know the going it's hard to wrap their head around what's yeah. going on and that's that's why i think you get so so much more of a personal experience and the best thing is, is you get to purchase uh great bourbon and <laughs> well, rice also and you the, you're yeah. almost here all the time Unless you're yeah. on vacation it, in Florida. Or, or traveling. I've I'm not it, traveling. Every time, I'm, every I'm time I've been yeah. here, I've seen yeah, it. So, yeah. yeah. so, I, I, I tried to be there. You know, that's and, and you made it a point, like say, to come out and talk to us each time. So. Well, you know, people, you know, like we said earlier, just, we're, we're a little bit out on the fringe of the yeah. bourbon. We're on the yeah. Kentucky Bourbon Trail craft tour, but we're on, kind of on the fringe there. And so people who have come here have made an effort to get here. Yeah. So I think it's a, and I, I, you know, stress this to our employees as well, and every, 
we're lucky that everybody here really loves what they're doing. Of course, it's hard not to love working at the discovery. Yes. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But everybody loves what they're doing. And, uh, but you know, it's, it's, people have made the effort to get here. Then we need to show the effort, you know, and that love back to them. Awesome. And awesome. you do. There's yeah. no doubt. Yes, you do. Plus, plus, your bartenders make a, a fantastic old fashioned. Yes, we we make the best old fashioned. Oh, yeah. I think. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's have Jim Morrison. Can, is he going? Is it Jim Morrison who's going to take us Jim out? Or Morrison, okay, yeah. let's just go. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> www.scotchybourbonboys.com, and then also uh, when you're there, please uh, push the Patreon to support us. We are the Scotchy Bourbon Boys on Patreon. You can get some fantastic swag, including the T-shirts uh, that you see today. <laughs> On the podcast, uh, so please support us. Every little bit helps, and we mean every little bit helps. All right, so thank you. Uh, remember, good bourbon equals good friendship. That's right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm driving. I'm just okay. putting it back. I'm cut off. <laughs> I'm not. I gotta last the whole day. This is delicious. It sure is. I may have to get another piece of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's okay. a wrap. Great, Ooh, thank right. you very much. Thank no you. problem, man, thank man, you. That all. was great. I had a good time. We did, uh, really? Yeah. I, you, I'm on the podcast, though. Do you ever not have a good time, or is it? I usually have a pretty good time. Yeah, you know, it's but, like but some, you know, some some are are a little harder to interact with. You know, mm -hmm. you know this is very easy. And, and that's what I try and do. I mean, that's. Oh. Um, Martin and I'll say hello because you're off camera. All right. <laughs> that is good. It sure is. It's very good. Let's post it. Okay. I just want you to do it so it's. Okay, Eric, you can make all the noise you want. <laughs> yeah. Freak it up. <laughs>